Merry Christmas. Well, first of all, obviously, the message from the thumbnail is addressed to my relatives who didn't get their presents in time because I was making this video. Most of you will remember the days when you made nice little Christmas presents by yourself for the grandparents and other family. These stars, for example, where you fold a square paper and use your children's scissors to do completely random cutouts, but when you unfold it, it magically becomes a beautiful star just because of its symmetry. You know, these little presents that have a fairly high sentimental value for your relatives just because you are so cute and little. Well, when you get older, the sentimental value bonus gets less and less because you are getting less little. And face the truth, less cute as well. Then your random cutout stars earn less honest enthusiasm and get hung up at least partly because of courtesy. Well, this is a time when you normally switch to mostly self-bought presents so everyone stays happy. Well, some of us either are too stingy or just miss the time when it is appropriate to switch. And from some point on, when you don't have time anymore but enough money, Everyone expects a self-made random cutout fold star from you every year because they've started a collection. So every year I try to come up with a new idea that I can mass produce to satisfy everyone's collecting mania. And by looking over it, I realize it somehow is a precise indicator for the craft I've learned that year or the latest tool I got or the latest technology I've learned to control. So this year, no, no, it's not mine, unfortunately, but I've spent most of my year setting it up, learning to control it and to do first projects with it. So this year, obviously, my mass-produced random cutout star had to be made with it. So I came up with the idea to try to make a Christmas tree from wood and to drill some holes into it to represent the balls and to put a candle inside to make the balls shine. For the first setup, I had to turn the tree upside down to be able to reach underneath all the branches with the cutter head and also to cut the hole for the candle and the feet that I need for the second setup. So when the first setup was done, I had to clean the part and the vise to then put in the holder for the second setup that I've cut previously and reuse for quite a lot of trees. And this is actually the second iteration of this holder as in the first one, this shaft in the middle was a little short, so it wasn't able to hold up against the cutting forces. So this one is a little longer and does quite fine for actually all the rest of the trees. I think I've cut 15 trees with only this holder, but I cut it without clearances. So it was pretty tight. So I had to hammer it on, but this way it was strong. Enough. And you now can see how these little feet interlock with the holder. So I'm sure it's in the right orientation. The robot first had to dig down through all the material to then reach the tip of the tree, the last bit missing. Wait, where are the holes? Well, unfortunately, I actually had to drill the holes by hand. Maybe one year of practice with this robot is not enough to master it. Well, it was not that easy to program the robot to do these holes without colliding with the table. So it was just much faster to drill them by hand.
Hold back your fire extinguisher. I've tested it with a candle and it works, but for better sleep at night, use the LED light. So that's it for this year. I hope you liked it. Have a wonderful holiday and see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.